Hello. We're just going to uh, wait for uh, Akshat to join. And uh, so this is really the third of what we're hoping to do um, as a series of talks, conversations uh, across the table, really informal. And uh, if any of you have um, uh, if any of you have ideas that you want to discuss, you're welcome to write to me. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay, architecture discipline is unable to join. Hopefully, they can. I was wondering if Mansi's on the call and can reach out to Akshat and check what the issue is. Yes, but for everyone who's just joining, thank you for joining. We are excited to discuss um, ideas, and uh, which would vary from architecture to. Um, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, architecture, landscape, product design, and all of that. So um, just write in if you have something you'd like to share. Yes. Okay. So the actually comes on board now. Hi, Akshat. Hi, Nisha. How are you? Hey, good. Good to connect with you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yes. Are you sitting in a beautiful garden? I'm sitting in my studio. We are blessed <laughs> with a beautiful garden. Yes. <laughs> That's lovely. So, uh, yeah. So, Akshat, just for everyone who's joined, Akshat uh, and Architecture Discipline had about three projects that were showcased at the London Design Biennale. And we're going to be looking at, a, we'll just talk informally about all three of them. One of them was actually uh, the design for a work of jewelry, uh, which also had sensors for a COVID time. And uh, yeah, so Akshat, I thought we'll start with a couple of, you know, general um, questions, um, because it's the first time we're meeting. And I was wondering what, um, you know, uh, in projects like the ones you've showcased, which is the community uh, uh, medical facility using waste containers, I know that containers have been used for a while, but I think to be able to um, uh, think of an emergency, uh, you know, drop-down medical facility, especially in a time of COVID, is just remarkable. And um, and the second was the Mana Hotels, which, um, uh, is that, do you pronounce it as Mana or Mana? It's pronounced Mana. Mana, mana means, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah, at Ranakpur. And uh, basically, uh, which was fascinating, these huge sort of, you know, long walls made of local debris uh, or random rubble masonry, really, but really large, uh, you know, uh, swathes of walls, which made it very, very local. And of course, the, the jewelry piece, I have a lot of questions about that one, too. <laughs> so, yeah. So my first question is really... Um, you know, when it comes to containers, a lot of architects have done container work, uh, and it tends to be quite fashionable to look at that. Um, but do, what, what would you see are, you know, does it really work out to be as economical as uh, the cost of a container? Because there are hidden, like you have to reinforce maybe, you have to, uh, uh, you know, just make it climate productive and, uh, you know, sheltered from the hot sun. So how, how has it worked? I know it's an idea. Have you built this project, or is it is it an idea that you hope to build? So um, we've been working with containers for a while. Uh, we have a little container yard in our own studio. So we're blessed with a, a, a studio which is a little over an acre, and we do a little bit of our own farming and such. So we have quiet yep. rooms. Uh, we have a few quiet rooms, and we have a pantry and a and a bottle workshop and a material store, which yep. are in containers. Yep. So it, they were kind of ad hoc. Um, uh, they were ad hoc measures, right, to to create space quite quickly. 
uh, without mm-hmm. too much of a mess. Um, we're also, you know, over the years, we've uh, we've groomed a few workers uh, who understand um, a lot of what we do and very quickly, so so they can interpret sketches or just verbal instructions quite quickly. Yes. Um, as so as a result, we were, you know, we were we found that we were quite free working with these with uh, both land and sea yeah. containers, right? I yes. I understand that there is a lot and um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of toxic waste that is generated if you start stripping out paint, especially with sea containers. So let's understand that yes. there's a difference between land and sea containers, but both can be stacked. Right, uh, yes. land containers can be stacked a little less than sea containers, um, mm-hmm. but more imp- well. And so repurposing them is easy. More importantly, yes. um, which I think a lot of people do not know is that mm-hmm. a lot of uh, contemporary hotels, for example, hotels like Citizen M are built with containers. And those are sort right. of spe- specifically ma- made containers. We're doing a project with, uh, we're doing actually two projects with two different very large hospitality firms mm-hmm. uh, where we're right. using uh, container technology uh, right. for making, you know, very, very large developments. Mm-hmm. So the, the, um, and these are these are not made in India. These are actually made abroad. Um, right. In terms of so your first que- to answer your first question in terms of, is there a lot of waste and toxic material generation? You have to be careful. You have to understand what you're doing, and you have to understand the limits of where you need to go. Um, yes. So I wouldn't yes. just buy sea containers and start stripping them out and paint. Or I wouldn't buy sea containers, and it's it's kind of like working with asbestos in a sense, right? So you need to know what you're dealing yeah. with. Uh, That's the right. second. The second aspect of this is, is it cost effective? Um, to pre- know in terms of fundamental, if you were to take the same, sc- A, you have limits when you're working with existing containers of what size you're occupying or, or what size you can build in. So mm-hmm. there, therein lies a fundamental limitation. So, you know, if, if architecture is the largest customization job you will do, then working with, uh, with retrofitting containers obviously limits you. Um, yes. Yeah. Can you create that same habit, that same square footage of habitat uh, cheaper? Um, no. If you're using recycled containers, no. Uh, yeah. But but no. But but you can definitely. Uh, but you can definitely. Uh, uh, you must. But but you definitely do need to insulate them if they have to be yeah. habitable and and such. I'm um, sorry. I. Last sentence you said, uh, you definitely can. If you need to, if you need to, uh, you have to insulate them if they have to be, you, right. if they have to be made habitable for long That's durations. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. Does it, but, you know, to, to be honest, I think, I think in our country, uh, mm-hmm. we, we don't really explore the physics of building a lot, right? We, we're very happy. We're very content working with, uh, uh, with what exists, right? With with existing construction techniques and technology, and yeah. as a studio, we like to explore beyond that. Um, right. I've been obsessed with the British high tech guys for uh, since since architecture school, right? So the the right. uh, you know uh, and and um, so that understanding of building physics, efficiency, optimization um, yeah. does, uh, and the understanding of sub, you know electromechanicals and sort of just understanding the physics of how to do things. Uh, drives us. Yeah. yeah, in fact, that that was really what I was going to ask you next. I'm glad you spoke of it. That, you know, in, in using a system like this, you really need to be over a, over a series of projects, uh, be able to detail a system, you know, and it, it's, which is perfectly resolved. You know exactly how to deal with the corners of, you know, so I think it needs a, a sort of expertise which goes beyond a first project. And it's great that you're working, you know, you, you're, you have a continuous practice of working with it, which means there's a certain mastery of craftsmanship, which is fabulous, yeah. Yeah, I, so I, I wouldn't say... Yeah, so go ahead. I wouldn't say that we are, we are masters at it, and I wouldn't say that we specialize at it. I don't, I don't believe most yeah. architects, at least the ones that I follow, they don't specialize in any one thing. We just do many things. Um, yes. And and just to to answer your first question again, uh, some a part I missed out. Yes, we're actually we are doing a primary healthcare facility prototype. Mm-hmm. We're doing two prototypes of primary healthcare and education for the Delhi government now using containers. Lovely, lovely. 
And I think when you have those benchmarks, you know, when there's sufficient benchmarks to see, sufficient details to learn from, it really grows the boundaries of what it can be architecturally. And I think that's vital. So that's great that you have government uh, prototypes as well. Yeah. yeah. I looked at the fact is that in our profession, like we have so much history and we have, yes. you know, an endless future. Yes. Um, you have so much to learn from in the past and there's so much to explore for the future that, and everything in between that what, yeah. what becomes a revolution for one generation really becomes a skill set for the next, right? Mm -hmm. Take mm -hmm. modernism, postmodernism, deconstruction, whatnot. So, uh, and, and therein lies the importance of sort of understanding history and theory, right? And, and sort of implementing mm -hmm. that in practice which is something that I believe we, we attempt to do. So, you know, you, we're not a commercial studio. We're not right. Right. a mass mm -hmm. studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the other thing that I found striking about it was in the time of COVID, that if one is able to really retrofit this, the only issue might be how you carry the container's interior. But I thought it was a fascinating opportunity for hospitals and places where you can treat patients to just come up on the spot, you know, instantly, almost overnight, with a sufficient systemic detailing of what is needed for, a, you know, a hospital ward or a, a testing center or whatever. So that was great. Is this a project that you hope to build? We're building some parts of it um, um, mm -hmm. and um, and some parts of it. So the, just took to, to sort of uh, we look. The fact is that the studio reacted, right? It, I'm I'm blessed to have a great yeah. set of people, and I'm actually the most redundant of the lot. I have zero skill set when it comes to that, to, to any of that. Um, One has to ID it. <laughs> and and um, and the the container project was was an exercise to demonstrate how it can go beyond just a series of models. We we'd done a few before in small formats, but it was a series of exercises to to show what it could be. We're well aware that um, nothing can come up faster than a tent and a sort of army boot camp, so to speak, yes. you know, of, uh, for for healthcare. And and I think right. some some organizations, especially like the ones that made beds out of uh, cardboard boxes, was was incredible. Right. It was just phenomenal response and phenomenal response time. So the idea of the COVID or, the, or of a healthcare facility was not really. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, to take to 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 challenge what the military or or you know the government bodies would do as said, because the first thing sure. you'll do is occupy stadiums. You'll occupy. Um, yes. You you'll you'll make you'll use sort of dismantleable tents and sort of almost create refugee facilities for such. But this was meant to be a slightly longer term uh, setup to say, right. well, if you're going somewhere and you're going to be creating this, may as well mm -hmm. use a system that can be a primary healthcare, b uh, could yeah. be a little more sophisticated and sort of eventually not be a situation where uh, not not be a system that has to deal with typhoons and earthquakes and whatnot is still safe and third yeah. can be converted into a different facility over time so starts with healthcare mm -hmm. maybe becomes a community facility over time right so it's yes. it's basically right. built infrastructure which is flexible right 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 and in you know in your work with containers do you uh, what sort of i mean this is just a very simple structural question in terms of how flexible the module ends up becoming uh, so my question is really, how much of it can you cut to uh, to ensure that its structural stability stays the same without having to add too many new members? You know, as a percentage, is it is it ten percent, twenty percent from your various projects? Uh, no, it it depends on where you're cutting it and depends on how much you're stacking. So um, right. we've done projects where you can stack up to eight eight or nine containers on you know. Uh, Okay. And still achieve level, right? So it's also about how precise your leveling is and how how you're yes. reacting on foundations. Remember, these foundations are often ad hoc. Um, yes. So and how you're interconnecting modules. Finally, uh, you know, the, the, there's one fairly striking uh, container project, which is a Freitag office in in Zurich or their their showroom, which is like, you know, mm -hmm. I think twelve containers yes. tall, and I've been inside it. It's it's quite fascinating. Yes. So again, yeah. it's about understanding the limits. I don't. I think we've pretty much learned to work around. If you see the number of yeah. iterations that have been done for the healthcare facility on individual modules, uh, you yeah. can see that we're fairly rigorous and we managed to work our, uh, not just for it, but even for offices and such. And uh, we've been right. able to work our way around the system. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I, yeah, that's a, that's a huge, uh, it's a huge resource when you look at 
uh, what is available by way of shipping and um, as a result as a residue of trade and uh, how effectively it can be used as an architectural resource material. So it's great, wonderful. Um, the other quick project uh, that, I, the other project I want to quickly discuss is uh, Mana Hotels, which uh, I, I just fell in love with these long, bold walls that you pick up from the site. And I wanted to ask you, what stone is that? It's actually, uh, it's a, it's it a has quartz. a stony kind of look, color wise. It's, it, it's a stone, it's actually, so it's random rubble masonry. It's coarse yes. rubble masonry. Um, mm. It was my first project, um, and I was right. I think I was twenty seven or twenty eight when I when when I sketched it out, and it took me about a little less than three years to build it. So that was unbelievable right. speed uh, <laughs> from you know given where I was coming from, and uh, I couldn't imagine it. So I still pinch myself to think with, of think that the Ranakpur project and the Discovery Center project were our first two projects in the studio. Um, right. But the, the, the stone came from the site and around a surrounding area. It's actually quarry rubbish. It's not, it was not specifically mine. Mining was banned in those areas. And the site is actually a rubble bed. It's actually an, a reclaimed river bed. Um, yeah. the, 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 the tall walls were actually a reaction to my, dri uh, my drive from Udaipur to run it. You know, through the Udaipur Valley to Ranakpur, you see all these sort of uh, random walls and you see, yes, you know, like yes. fairly primitive, just fallen down uh, shelter, yes. that pe ad hoc shelter that people have created to to save themselves from the sun or whatever. It was a reaction to that. Um, right. And, and, you know, just these buttressed or these, you know, sort of uh, these sort of mm -hmm. gravity walls that, that have stood the test of time, uh, yes. you know, with mm -hmm. forts and, what, and fortifications and whatnot as you drive through. And right. then the rendering, the, you know, just the color rendering yeah. in the landscape is is, is right. quite stunning. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I th I think what stands out for me here is two things. One is that you don't have to quarry stone to make a beautiful wall. You know, and there's always there's, it's it's a it's a two a two headed uh, sort of an issue where sustainable material is concerned, whether to quarry or not to quarry stone. You know, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people feel that it's it's an, it's a resource that you can't. Uh, uh, sort of replenish and therefore it should not be quarried in a sustainable world system. So I think that's really interesting that you can use uh, you know, stone that would be considered as a uh, non-construction stone and make this fabulous long and tall wall. Tell us about the dimensions <laughs> because that's inspiring for everyone to, you know. If, if I remember correctly, 13 meters high and the foundations, wow. are, the foundations are eccentric and fairly low. Um, okay. uh, there are mm -hmm. cases like if you if you if you read through the building, you'll see that you know there are some steel structures, and there was a there's a narrative on time and whatnot on it. And uh, yes. to be honest, a lot of people have asked me if it's a critical regional project, and I've always said it's a construction optimization project. It was not a critical regional project at all. Uh, yeah. Be because I think that expression can be mistaken for I mean, our logic was not based in critical regionalism. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. But a lot a, a lot of it is. Um, they are mm -hmm. that tall, they are that slender, and they sort of move away from you as you walk past them, just so that they're not imposing, they just gently shift away. Um, yes. And there is like a whole narrative on, on time and how the yes. architecture is yes. non-orthogonal, but the, but the landscape is, and the landscape is celebrates the change of seasons. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the construction is optimized and rationalized because we've got some steel elements that sort of prop. So it's almost like the walls are trying to fall and the steel's holding it up, right? So. Uh, that allowed us to optimize steel right. consumption. So we've got steel columns which are incredibly slender, which are 60 by 22, 66, 66 by 122 hollow sections going up 14, 15 meters. Into sections. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. It's, so your base is around, your base is 122, is it? Your base the base, the, no, the base of the wall is about, I think, was 450 or 350. Yes. 50. Okay. Okay. Uh, it was it was the norm and and the wall tapered right so the and but to take a wall as a freestanding cantilever up 13 14 meters which is not sort of it's not bound by reinforcement we used yeah. if you've seen that the staircase that juts through so that's a sort of jugglery you know, that's sort of right. a, a, it's a balance right so you we've taken these steel members through a wall 
which then hold mm-hmm. that section of the wall down then allow you to balance the staircase on the other side yeah. while it's being anchored in on the other a lot of people have asked me who 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 was our crazy structural engineer if we found some new young kid but <laughs> but he's been our engineer since 2002 and he's the only structural engineer I've ever worked with he's an yes. incredible old man <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah it's a very very rich uh, sort of a palette of uh, you know colors and textures and all of that and uh, have you what is the sort of length of the wall that it stays clean up before it shifts Because you have a wall that's thirty meters high, you have forty-five centimeters at the base. It sounds like a structural feat. Do you have any courses that connect this in between? Uh, yeah, there is, there is, there is, there is a normalization course after every, and that's more to level the wall and to ensure that the workers are uh, are, are working well. We did. We used a yeah. very, very skilled, uh, well, head mason or raj mistri, who had actually been involved in making some of the dams and or some of the some of the culverts and all in that region for for the last forty fifty years. So he oversaw the construction. Um, mm-hmm. There is so it is a it is a partially coast masonry. So and the courses are used for for neutralization. I yeah. don't believe there is any. We used very little concrete. We were blessed because this is seismic zone too. So we didn't really have too much natural yeah. force to worry about except the wind. Um, yes. Of course, having a sloping roof. adds to right. problems for the engineers but uh, mm-hmm. it helped what was complicated was that the water table was only 450 so it was only 1 and 1/2 feet oh so the building is pretty much floating yes yes so how deep are the foundations uh 450 600 at best uh, oh. and we're oh. building on rubble huh? so this is a reclaimed river bed so the so there is no mm-hmm. real soil the soil the the soil is just granular it's just rocks uh-huh. uh, and it's not Okay. stable rocks it unstable rocks so we had to we do we did things like pour plum concrete use minor right. footings you know sort of have more mm-hmm. footings which mm-hmm. are smaller in size to ensure that the uh, right that mm-hmm. the building was stable but and it's we yeah. based it all around mat- a reduction in material consumption so even the and concrete so the mm-hmm. slabs are made of something called cassia stone which is a sandstone that spans about 8 feet 2400 mm-hmm. and and we've got right. very small steel joists that okay. um that yeah. that that it help extend the span and then there's a there's a little bit of a welded wire mesh and a sort of screed that ties the top together to give it a diaphragm action um right mm-hmm. i that was uh, and and that was also part of our objective was to carry the language of the architecture from the public area all the way to the inside spaces which right. is often not done in hotels right Uh, yes. i find that it's a it's a much abused typology in our mm-hmm. world you know we 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 criticize hotel architecture but but i think that yeah. it 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 lends you some luxury to experiment and uh, you know That's with right. with building That's right. yes yes yeah i saw that in your drawings it's very nice and um actually how do you start on a project i mean you know especially when i i, I didn't mean in general but when you have a clear uh, cut agenda to be as uh you know uh, as uh, honest to the ecology local ecology as possible where does your starting point begin for a project i mean this is just for anyone to uh, be inspired by mm, uh, you know i i studied and practiced music since i was 13 and i was playing progressive metal and rock um <laughs> and that sort of honed my skills uh, you know my reaction skills and the the need to the need to understand or to the need to the need to appreciate virtuosity and you know sort of understand something yes. some such thing so i i like to put up a show and i like to be a virtuoso if <laughs> that's what some people tell me uh, but right. uh, also also of course studying the you know studying the new masters right studying the big four the piano roger foster um yeah. you know and then you know understanding that there is a there is a point that you can depart from them or there's enough learning in that but yes. fundamentally we compose uh, at least i compose in a stream of consciousness right so um i was telling someone recently that all the analysis synthesis diagrams that were taught in architecture school do happen in the studio uh, a lot of it is done but it's all actually pretty much like mopping the floor just to understand just like it just yeah. it's a it's a mechanical exercise to let things sink in mm-hmm. to find your point of departure right uh, yes. because because i do believe what we are doing today 
is to mm. create a memory for tomorrow right which doesn't necessarily have to be dependent on the memory that was yesterday right so so you are making architecture for the future and there are there are different levels of that that you know that future um so really at the end of the day for us it's um, uh, for a lot of our projects it, if it's if the project's driven by me personally mm-hmm. then it's a, then it's then it's a stream of consciousness and a reaction if it's yes. uh, uh, if it's by others in the studio then it's to each their own and and you know the and the merit of the 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 of what is proposed in itself so the containers for example were were not done by me at all um, and there was a very different rationalization exercise that was done for that yes yes yeah and uh, i think um you're right there's a whole phase like you said you know when you make analysis diagrams or you make your sketches or whatever uh, manner that someone may process that section of the artistic practice just to let everything sink in mm-hmm. for the this to happen later that's right this is what's very useful yeah and um before we get on to the discuss f token is very different in that sense do you have want to share with us something that's on the cards for the future that might be exciting if you want to reveal especially with to do with sustainable practice mm mm-hmm. i don't know i mean so, I, yeah i think i think i think we're doing the first We're doing the first glue laminated mask, the first real mask in the structure, full mask in the structure in India now, and we might just be we're trying to do a mask in the uh, bridge, a foot over bridge for in Delhi with the government, um, and that's just like continued material experimentation. Um, I mean, I, th- I think there's a there's a length and breadth of what we do, right? So there is a lot of we, we were involved in the in the. in the urban regeneration project in jodhpur uh, you know uh, so there's there that part of the practice which is sort of dealing with what is or with adaptive reuse and regeneration and then there's the other part of the practice which is dealing with what's coming in future and i think that um, yeah that that mm-hmm. dialogue is what makes this studio interesting uh, and keeps right. us alive right yeah yeah um, and, but uh, But, okay. but I think we have like seventeen or eighteen projects on the on 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 our boards right now, live projects on the drawing okay. board. I can't yeah. I can't say which is the most interesting one. Yeah. So this is interesting. Your your glued laminated your 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 structure because I think there's there's a there's a clue in that in terms of one is able to look at waste and look at you know plywood waste or MDF waste or linear waste or what, whatever there is that is you know. And if there's a system by which one is actually able to build with waste, you know, uh, with that waste, by techniques like this, you know, sort of uh, using smaller sections, using really small sections to make large, uh, you know, large elements, uh, it is quite fascinating. So you know, we look forward to you sharing that publicly with the world of architects. <laughs> Uh, and just to come to the last bit of jewelry, tell us how you got interested in the S choker. So just for everyone who is, um, uh, yes, we'll be a little louder. Uh, for everyone who's, uh, you know, w- wondering what S choker is about, it's a beautiful piece of jewelry, very beautifully crafted, that is um, useful in a time of COVID when you want to, when you need to maintain a certain distance, and we all forget to maintain that distance. So tell us about S choker. It's very beautifully crafted. I love the way it looks. <laughs> well yeah I I think like I said I'm blessed with uh, with a group of people who are really focused on what they do and they and they and they're very and they're very skilled at what they do as well. Um I think um you know I think if you if you leave yourself open to uh you know a, a wide variety of influences uh, they inform um, you know they they sort of they inform what you're going to do in your in your fundamental practice and that's how we are um i read i i don't believe me i don't read architecture i don't i don't even read what's written about i often don't read what's written about architecture discipline i very rarely read um, like that <laughs> very rarely read journals very rarely read any longer do i read books on theory and philosophy and such um, i don't write yeah. but i read a lot on technology right i read yeah. and and i think and with all it's it's the easiest sort of most interesting read you can find right tech so yes. um 
i you know when this when this happened we were we were on one of our uh, uh, you know video calls and we figured that hey you know it it might be interesting and, and i and i was sort of toying with the idea of going for uh, burning man the festival and um, yes. and i realized that it probably won't I, I, you know it just dawned upon me i said hey this is not going to happen again this burning man <laughs> probably never going to happen how will how will you get together in a as a in a as a tribe and like i said i mean i think in a stream of consciousness so um, first reaction was hey you know what can we sort of do something that becomes a sign of the times uh, and yes. just by the way when i was living when i during the pandemic i'd moved out of my parents house uh, right. and I, i was sort of living a, uh, i was living uh, in an apartment uh, on the ring road of delhi right mm-hmm. and i could just see mass movement i could see people on their feet just moving there's just a mass exodus and it was yes. scary it was scary it was depressing oh. and it was during it was alarming it was just during one of those uh one of those while i was watching that is when i had this had this uh, uh when i was on this phone i was on this call with my with my studio and we, we said can you know and we were talking about a burning man structure or, and such uh but yes. we also said can you know how do you make a sign of the times like when when i was yeah. growing up and i was in school the sign of the times at that time was the red aids ribbon and then later <laughs> it became this silicon band uh right. from right. you know lance armstrong's cancer band yes. and we we sort of this was our attempt at sort of making one sign of the time but to say how do you yes. meet people and not know if and know that they're they're affected right this was well before the arogya say to happen we knew something right. like this would any eventually come along which would be tracking you so can you do something which is a non tracking device so we used right. something called a mesh um uh, and i forget i forget the technical term as as i speak what but like a, a mesh network as such so that uh, which which works off grid so it works in communicating using your bluetooth and wifi together it mm. works based on a near field sort of system to say with within a couple of kilometers of range so a device can yeah. use another device to communicate to the third device and not actually have to use the main system because yes. it really did feel like uh, uh you yes. know like like there was some uh, you know this apocalypse uh, 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 apocalypse apocalypse, apocalypse. <laughs> and um, yeah. and i yeah. think that just that conversation led to someone putting up their hand and and saying okay you know i'm going to take the lead on this and and we'll design something and right. it was it wasn't just a choker I and mean, the choker was more because it's like a more tribal symbol right uh, yes. and uh, mm-hmm. so it was not just a choker it was a choker and a, and a bracelet and yes. as such as a, as a sort of sign the choker was obviously the most defined one mm-hmm. um uh, and 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 we sort of sent it out i think eventually now with with how quickly technology moves there are there's a, there's a company in 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 china yeah. they actually developed a ring which does the same thing right right so did you prototype it to an actual yeah. uh, piece y- yes we did we did mm. we did and we gave it away okay <laughs> with all the way happening again and again it might be useful <laughs> yes 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 i i but but like 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 you see the 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 identifiers for the sick, for the illness are not the same right that's right that's right yeah with lovely lovely talking talking to you akshat and um uh wishing you all of all of the amazing things you're doing we see all of that all of those ideas built as wonderful benchmarks for the future yeah thank and you thank for having you. me here thank you also for being a part of the the show no i, I think you. it was a fantastic show i think it was a it was an incredible yeah. effort um uh, uh, none of us could go but we saw we, we were following it and we saw so parts of it it was it's an incredible effort and 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 uh, and i and i think it's 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 kind of heartwarming to see so much coming out of our country That's now right. and That's and a right. lot of it is is relevant I, i i just wish that more and more people reach out and and see what was what was presented there yes and i think what's important is for us to share ideas so that one can collaborate one can learn from each other and create new you know new benchmark so we're really hoping that uh, you know uh, to be able to reach out and see how we can get it across to the cities so that we can all see each other's work 
so I'm reaching out at this point of time to see who would be interested. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think what's incredible is that you see a lot of skill being showcased yes. here, right? The, the unfortunate part of of uh, of with conventional yeah. publication, conventional media, as well as conventional engagement, is that one 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 engages with skill sets, but one doesn't get to understand character, right? And character That's is something right. that you either have or you don't have, right? And and it's it's that uh, that we need to experience more. And I hope this becomes an opportunity yes. for more engagement. Yes, I hope so too. Yeah. Lovely catching up with you, and thanks for sharing your work. We'll be in touch. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for uh, yeah, connecting again. Yeah. Bye, Akshay. Thanks. Bye. Bye.